Well, welcome back to America's Voice Live alongside of Tudor Dixon. I am Matt Locke. And Tudor, we had an historic, historic peace agreement happen today between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. And we've got a guest here. His name is Barry Nussbaum. He is the founder and CEO of American Truth Project. Barry, thank you for joining us. I want you to listen to what the president had to say today. Just a few moments ago, I hosted a very special call with two friends, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed of the United Arab Emirates, where they agreed to finalize a historical peace agreement. Everybody said this would be impossible. And as you know, Mohammed is one of the great leaders of the Middle East. After 49 years, Israel and the United Arab Emirates will fully normalize their diplomatic relations. They will exchange embassies and ambassadors and begin cooperation across the board and on a broad range of areas, including tourism, education, health care, trade, and security. So, Barry, why is this historic? This is the first peace deal between Israel and any Arab country in 26 years. That is extraordinary. If you think about it, um, the last deals were with Egypt and Jordan, and they were very extensively negotiated, and there was a lot given on both sides. 26 years go by, there's a cold peace in the Middle East, and out of the blue, and I mean that, Trump has pulled off a miracle, and he very well could be and should be considered for the Nobel Peace Prize for this incredible achievement. So I want to ask about the Iran nuclear deal, because they say that the reason this occurred was because the president was able to pull us out of that deal. But Biden is currently running on restoring that deal. Does that hurt him in this election? Well, there's a should be and, it, and, and the real answer. It should horribly. Uh, Biden and Obama put together what is, in my opinion, the worst blunder in American foreign policy history, i.e. the Iran nuclear deal. It was supposed to declare they're going to be peaceful, they're going to give up their nuclear ambitions, and we're going to just literally fly uh, plane loads of cash on pallets to them. What they do with the money? Well, they invested it in terrorism, in weapons, in missiles, and nuclear enhancement uh, in order to make a bomb. So Biden is tied to a deal that doesn't just enhance terror, it encouraged terror. He's in a box. He's got to go back and say, well, the deal didn't work because of Trump. And that is an outrageous lie. But he's stuck with it because that is part of the policy of the Obama Biden years. He's going to call for it to be put back. He's already done it at least once that I know of. I don't know how Biden is going to respond to this because this is such an enormous deal and the wagons are circling around Iran right now. The UAE is a huge coup for Trump. This cannot be overemphasized. This peace deal is that big a deal. Think about it. You'll go to the UAE and you'll see the flag of Israel in the very near future flying over their own embassy. And from what I heard today from Israel, talking to the former ambassador, he says there are talks going on right now with other Gulf states like Bahrain, like Bahrain possibly Saudi Arabia, like the other Gulf states. They're going to follow and they all surround Iran and Iran, instead of being the, well, exporter of terrorism and scaring the hell out of everybody around them is being isolated. That's going to put Biden in a really tough place to explain how he still backs Iran and doesn't back Trump's new deal. Well, Barry, you know this is a big deal when places like media outlets like CNN, MSNBC, they're not talking about this at all. All. This is probably the biggest news going today. You hit a little bit on it, but I want you to tell our viewers, what does this do for the United Arab Emirates? What does it do for Israel? And more importantly, what does it do for President Trump in the United States? Uh, 
A plus, A plus, and A plus in all areas. It's the perfect question to ask. Quite frankly, there's already extensive cooperation that's been going on for several years between the Gulf states and Israel on security concerns. They're all anti-jihadi. They're all anti-Iran. They're trying to hold back literally the guerrillas and terror organizations coming out of Iran. So you're going to see a lot more military cooperation and intelligence cooperation. In, a, in addition, there's a real need for scientific cooperation between the countries. They want the Israeli technology, especially for farming and new areas of um, electronics like Microsoft is big there. Um, the various Gulf states all want pieces of the Silicon Valley dream that is right now the Tel Aviv corridor. In addition, and this is really going to be wild, I think for the United States, Donald Trump now has, as he said in his speech in the White House today, a second ally in the Middle East, meaning first Israel, Saudi's been there, kind of, sort of, but the UAE is going to fly the Israeli flag in their capital when the embassy opens. So for Donald Trump, this is an enormous achievement. <laughs> and the various media outlets you're referring to aren't going to mention it because this is a huge, huge achievement that, quite frankly, they're going to ignore and they'll report on puppies instead of this. Absolutely. Last night, we heard Joe Biden come out and say that the president coddles terrorists and thugs. This is the same president who killed Soleimani al-Baghdadi and got rid of ISIS. And so how does this how does this help in that area when you have a former vice president who has supported terrorists coming out and saying that the president is supporting terrorists. We don't exactly know what he means by that statement. But is that going to be something that will be used to backfire against him? Because obviously Soleimani stayed in power because of the Obama-Biden administration, and the president took him out. Yeah, he, Biden's in a corner, and you have to run on your record whether you like that record or not. There's just too much evidence of the dumb foreign policy that the two of them, I mean, Biden and Obama, put together over eight years. You can't say, oh, I wasn't involved. That was the president. I've got different ideas because it makes him look ineffectual and unconnected and uh, I think feeds the narrative that he's kind of a disconnected old guy, which he needs to be a hands-on guy. So there's a problem there. And, and you hit another very good point. The UAE very, very much wants security cooperation with Israel against terror. They're all afraid of the terrorists. I mean, look at the Houthi rebels, what they've done to Yemen. That's all Iran. Look at Hezbollah, what they've done to Syria um, and Lebanon. That's all coming from Tehran. The Gulf states that want to retain, retain their power uh, and have peace, they're only going to have one ally, and that's the United States-Israel um, unification together against terror. Biden's got a problem on how he's going to sell this was a bad idea. My guess is they'll be doing the, hey, look over their speech, because there's nothing bad about this. And you combine it with the fact that the Democrat Party has been against annexation of any of the settlements in Judea and Samaria saying um, it's racist, it's illegal, it's against foreign, uh, foreign policy standards, it's against uh, UN Security Council resolutions. Now, Bibi put that on hold. In the press conference today, Jared Kushner says it's frozen. How is Biden going to attack that? Israel is doing exactly what the Democrat Party wanted Trump to do and Israel to do, and Israel did it. How do you attack getting exactly what you want? I think there's a campaign problem in the Middle East now. About one minute left, and I gotta tell you, I think how I think I know how Joe Biden's gonna handle this. I saw the tweet today where he said it was a bilateral bilateral agreement that Trump didn't have much to do with it, that it had to do with Obama Biden setting all this up for the Trump campaign. So thank you so much, Barry Newsbaum. He is the founder and CEO of America Truth Project. Thank you for taking the time, Tudor. They've got to change their tone. I mean, he Mr. Newsbaum is right. This is historic.